Kenyan politicians last night held their final presidential debate. Pollsters are expected to come out with figures to suggest who is in the lead in the run-up to the elections next week. Joining us now to discuss whether opinion polls work in the African context is Dr. Tom Wolfe. He's a senior researcher at Ipsos Cinevite. Uh, Dr. Wolfe, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, polls traditionally associated with uh, developed countries such as America, the UK, not very much, um, you know, situated within an African context. But of course, this is changing. Take us through the highlights of the Ipsos poll. I see that 64% of registered voters had access to the debate last year and what, uh, rather last night and watched it. Um, take us through how accurate your, your poll is and whether it's going to be able to tell us in real terms who's in the lead in Kenya. Well, um, thank you very much. Of course, if the polls could predict exactly the election, we could save the Kenyan taxpayers an awful lot of money by just doing a poll instead of having a real election. Um, so obviously, as is true anywhere in the world, they can be an indication uh, at the time the polls are taken of uh, where the trends are going, but uh, mainly because of the unknown factor of differential voter turnout across the registered voter population. Uh, until the election is over, in fact, uh, and we compare our figures with the actual results, will we or anybody else know how accurate we were? Mm -hmm. And by the way, I should make a very small correction in your question. The 64% uh, you referred to was actually from the first debate uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we did not undertake a poll after last night's mm -hmm. debate. Today, in fact, according to the uh, publication of uh, Opinion Polling Act, it was passed by Parliament uh, last year and signed into law by the President, uh, prohibits any poll from being published uh, within five days of the election. So no polls can be released after midnight tonight. Mm -hmm. Take us through the sample size of the polling that you did uh, between the 15th and the 19th of, of February, um, and also just the methodology so that one can um, kind of be able to ascertain, um, you know, the kind of representativity that one is likely to get from a poll like this. Yes, well, uh, to answer your question in full would probably take an hour. Um, and of course, we don't have that amount of time. But um, two, two ways that I would answer the question, or maybe three. First of all, um, for details on the uh, methodology, the protocols, uh, any of your viewers can go to the Afrobarometer website, which is www.afrobarometer.org. That is a private consortium of research institutes in South Africa at Idassa in Cape Town, uh, in Accra, and at Michigan State University in the US. Um, we have no affiliation with the Afrobarometer, although I did do their first survey in Kenya with a Kenyan colleague in 2003. But all of the uh, methodology for house-to-house -house surveys, random selection of the population uh, that the Afrobarometer use, we use, except in this case, just before an election, instead of allocating our sample across the map of Kenya, according to the census, with updates from the National Statistics Bureau, we, of course, use the uh, distribution of registered voters. Um, that, that's the main difference. But if you go back uh, over recent history, um, 2002, the first constitutional referendum that was defeated in 2005, the 2007 election, even if nobody knows exactly what those results were, our firm had predicted uh, or, or ascertained a 2% lead for Raila Odinga two weeks before the election. Um, and then the 2010 referendum. With uh, the sample that we've been using uh, the last two months uh, since the voters registration exercise closed of 6,000, that gives us a margin of error of plus or minus about 1.3%, which is about a 2.5% spread one way or another. But as I say, in addition to a few voters who were undecided making up their minds, a few voters changing their mind on the basis of the debate or campaign activity, advice from friends or any other factor, uh, together with especially, as I said earlier, the voter turnout, which can be uh, different in different parts of the country. Um, we, we, we have these as a kind of a, a, a guesstimate, mm -hmm. but we, it's not really a prediction. And especially when we had our two top candidates, uh, Prime Minister Raila Odinga and Deputy Prime Minister Uhuru Kenyatta, in a statistical tie, we certainly couldn't predict a winner. And finally, because under the new constitution, no one 
can win a presidential election without scoring more than 50% of the votes, mm -hmm. um, with neither of them being within 5% of that magic percent, um, I would at this point be surprised if anybody can win on the first round, and mm -hmm. if no one does, on the 10th of April, we'll have a second round runoff contest between the top two candidates, whoever they are. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the questions that you did ask was whether people felt that the presidential debates are beneficial to Kenya. And of course, you had a 93% yes. Uh, take us through the kind of advent of public debate, which in many cases in an African context is quite new. Uh, what kind of impact did it have on the political kind of landscape and also just the opinion of voters of their candidates? Well, we did, thank you for referring to that. We also did a special mobile phone poll with just about 1,100 uh, uh, either viewers or listeners to the debate immediately thereafter. But I want to thank you for pointing out, as you did earlier, that Kenya um, really is um, a leader in public issue uh, opinion polling and uh, a public behavior polling. Um, attitudes on issues and so on, whether people vote, problems with registration, attitudes to the Constitution. Um, really, I think there are very, very few countries uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, or even in all of Africa, because above the Sahara there's been almost no polling, um, as we saw with these revolutions breaking out and taking everyone by surprise in Northern Africa. And I think uh, Kenyans are very proud of it, even if many politicians uh, who don't come up well in the polls sometimes will complain that they've been rigged or we've sold results to the highest bidder and so on. Um, I think there is a general, in fact I know because we've asked some questions to Kenyans and the great majority think they do contribute to democracy. They give them strategic information uh, about the political landscape and uh, frankly we know that the major campaign teams do their own private, private polling, sometimes with the same firms that uh, they criticize in public. So the use of this strategic political information has become part and parcel of the landscape in Kenya. Although if you read um, uh, the book Victory Lab about the use of social research in American campaigns, uh, we haven't reached that stage yet for various reasons, but to by and large we're at the forefront. Now coming to your specific question about the debate, we did see from the poll that we did on the first debate that Uhuru Kenyatta, one of the top two candidates, uh, certainly came out ahead of his main opponent, uh, Rilo Odinga. Uh, but by and large, as you said, 93% uh, of those who watched and listened felt that debates were a good idea. Um, I have not been uh, uh, exchanging information in any detail with the media houses that organized it, um, but looking at us from a slight distance, I think one big contributing factor was the fact that the incumbent president, Mwaki Baki, has to retire under the Constitution. So that means that uh, even if some of the eight candidates are much better known to the Kenyan public than others, starting with the Prime Minister and the two Deputy Prime Ministers, Uru Kenyatta yes, and Musali Mudabadi, yeah. um, that uh, this is a, they're all sort of coming in at the same level.